Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the What Kind of Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. We're doing a, another honing your airbrush skills video. I've uh, had a look through my channel and noticed that I've been doing this uh, series for well over a year now and uh, due to its nature of um, practice, uh, experimentation and results I had a look at the uh, very first video of uh, my thoughts on uh, cleaning, um, manning the airbrush and uh, those little lines of uh, painted and I've generally tried to uh, maintain my airbrush no matter what state it was in between uh, projects or models by doing a full ultrasonic clean and tune as well as uh, practicing the lines. Now it is my philosophy with uh, anything, the best way to get uh, confidence and uh, your skill up in um, airbrushing and scale modeling is how frequently and how often you do. Now when you're very new and uh, you're given uh, tools, paints, whatever, you're uh, generally not very confident, you're going to do things very uh, slowly, hesitantly and mistakes happen until you get the uh, correct knowledge and you've uh, practiced it enough until you can do it at a standard that you're fairly happy with. Now with airbrushing the first few times you do it very slowly and you don't do it as often as you want to because of uh, being fearful. Now uh, what I've uh, noticed is the every month or bi-monthly, I was forced to pick up my airbrush if I wanted to or not, paint those lines and do a full clean. Looking at the models from um, late 2013 till now, the uh, painting has definitely improved dramatically. I've uh, definitely gone from just colouring in each piece and then manually uh, weathering it to a lot more uh, shading, gradient work, uh, dusting on um, weathering effects. Uh, pre-post shading, there's uh, definitely a uh, big improvement and uh, especially pushing those on my 70 second tanks. So uh, my biggest uh, inspiration draw and reason for running this um, uh, session and series of uh, videos is uh, proof that um, constant practice, even if not applied to your models, does um, fare to uh, better results indirectly. Uh, those uh, lines on a piece of paper you can um, get a second one and just scribble and do little camouflage patterns and shapes and just have fun. You don't have to actually draw the uh, straight lines. My straight lines actually <laughs> hasn't improved. My goal was um, in a year time to have a line as straight and thin as uh, that out of a pencil. Though I've learned how to eliminate um, the splatters and uh, the cutting out and all sorts of things to tune my airbrush to be absolutely uh, fine. Uh, no water in the line, emptying the tank, uh, fixing the tip, cleaning the nozzle, using uh, lubricants, all that sort of stuff and it's uh, just uh, come out as an absolute uh, machine. So if there's anything to take away from uh, watching all these videos of this series is uh, try to follow through. Every time I upload this, if you have a spare few uh, minutes, about half an hour to an hour, just randomly clean out your airbrush. Definitely buy an ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't own one, definitely put it on you, your list of uh, things that you must uh, purchase. And uh, draw some lines on a piece of paper, scribble, do some camouflage, have fun, or just buy a... Uh, trashy model kit for the sake of experimentation as we've all been very familiar with uh, this guy on all of my primer and paint tests. Now I'm going to cut into the uh, video. All I'm doing uh, this month is uh, just a basic uh, clean down. Unfortunately I'm coming across a few mechanical uh, problems and maybe needing to replace the seals or purchase a whole new airbrush. It is 10 years old after all taking in uh, lacquer. On the good side, uh, the people being sceptical about the cement cleaning out the nozzle, it's uh, actually spraying quite well and taking um, microfiller primers very, very well. I uh, cut to the video. Catch you guys later. The following footage is quite repetitive of uh, previous weeks of the condition and maintenance of the DH-103 airbrush. The Sparmax I've been using for quite a long time. Uh, none of this is uh, a tutorial but instead a long-term based 
experiment and uh, practice session that's evidence-based of uh, what I'm pretty much producing and a lot of it has been proven to be quite um, useful. I do advise to follow at home and uh, as mentioned in the longer video, uh, practice as well. So after a use, one month use of my airbrush, I have uh, painted the gumoir um, quite well and quite finely. Two tanks twice, I made a mistake with the finish and stripped the paint with uh, bleach, as well as work on the 1100 scale Leo. That's a, a lot of painting since uh, the previous maintenance uh, session which has left the inside of the airbrush um, a little more gunked up than usual. I've got it in all of its uh, absolute pieces in this image. Now the previous session showed if you cannot salvage or your nozzles are absolutely clogged or that you want to regularly uh, keep your nozzle unclogged I'm going to demonstrate how to straighten up the tip of your needle. If your needle has a bit of a hook or is uh, bent at the top or just spluttering like crazy and you think it's in a state to throw out, uh, like so honing or lightly uh, brushing the tip against sandpaper on a solid surface will uh, straighten it out and uh, go back to a tighter spray pattern. Unfortunately, prolonged uh, sessions of doing this regularly will wear down the um, tip to the point where it's not going to fit in the airbrush as well and uh, paint might ever so slightly escape in the closed position. As this uh, needle is extremely old and blunt, I did the paint line tests with this existing uh, needle that's sanded down. Uh, afterwards, I've uh, chucked it out and um, employed a new needle. Try not to do this too often unless absolutely necessary and that uh, not doing so actually affects the quality of your line spraying or finer airbrushing work more so than just the sake of it. The next step I clean out the nozzle with the extra thin cement. Not a lot of gunk has come out probably because I did so uh, the previous month. Always remember when uh, removing your uh, nozzle and putting it back, do not over tight with the uh, wrench as you will thread it. And I think uh, next month I'll try to get my hands on a rubber grommet and uh, just brush on uh, cement a few times and see if it's um, stable or falling apart or whatnot. Sort of a cause and effect on the material. Now as we remember last week I had a lot of trouble with the input air solenoid. For some reason it was uh, sticking or got stuck and would not uh, produce air whatsoever. Uh, that The old air solenoid is the one on the right, it's starting to get stripped and uh, brass is showing. The one on the left has been pulled off one of the uh, cheaper $20 eBay Chinese DH-103 airbrushes and was uh, put in. It was fairly new and the solenoid was uh, quite stiff but over a few sessions it uh, loosened up a bit. The old original solenoid I uh, soaked into a thinner and gave it a good uh, clean, a good scrub and working of the mechanism. It's come good since and is now currently in my airbrush. I have noticed that the solenoids alone are sold as individual parts under the DH-103 airbrush uh, title on eBay. From this experience from last month and then it coming good uh, this month, it might not hurt investing in the $5 parts and just having something spare. Other models of airbrush uh, which uses different forms of uh, valve uh, releasing of uh, air into the main cup may differ. Now this is something I haven't uh, sort of talked about for a few videos now. The fluid that I'm using to clean my airbrushes every time is lacquer thinner. I like to use uh, primers and lacquers a lot of uh, late through my airbrush. I buy a very large uh, tin of it from a hardware store which works out to be um, a little over 20 bucks for 4 litres opposed to the far smaller hobby size containers from the um, hobby shop. This is a lot more affordable method of uh, cleaning out your airbrush. 
if you are exclusively a uh, acrylic or an enamel airbrusher you're best off using a more milder uh, thinner or the thinner that's appropriate to the uh, paint you're using multi-purpose including enamels uh, lacquer thinner generally strips and cleans all on the uh, downside the stronger the solvent the more effect it's going to have on your uh, rubber seals. Now I'm noticing some areas such as the air solenoid and the um, nozzle, the seal does not really matter that much if there's a slight leak. Unfortunately, uh, down the center, the rear of the uh, paint cup, it does have a tendency of uh, leaking backwards into the airbrush. So that's where the uh, lubrication um, stage happens to prevent the air solenoid and the needle uh, backwards and forwards uh, function from sticking. The advantage of some of the more expensive and finer airbrushes is that they either use Teflon gaskets or grommets which uh, is resistant to stronger solvents or that the um, metal fits and pieces are tightly enough fitted that in an ultrasonic cleaner or cleaning in general they generally don't wear away. The next uh, step after everything's been uh, stripped is uh, a soak in the thinner in the ultrasonic cleaner. It generally uh, vibrates the entire lot uh, up to times per second and shakes every bit of uh, dirt out. In the uh, following pictures, you'll see how much uh, gunk and dirt has been dragged out of the airbrush and mixing among the uh, thinner. At this uh, point, as a regular airbrush user and cleaner, and with this uh, regime of cleaning the airbrush of a monthly to bi-monthly uh, basis, I do still highly recommend at the uh, $20-$30 uh, level excluding shipping, uh, ultrasonic cleaner is an absolute very important um, tool to purchase in uh, cleaning. You can get the bottle brushes and uh, whatnot, and but you do not get all the gunk out, and it does lead to all sorts of heartaches and issues in the future of your airbrush's uh, performance. Using paper toweling, the entirety of the airbrush was uh, wiped down in case any of the residue, residue in the uh, thinner stuck. And the insides has been swabbed out with a cotton bud. I think there might have been a slight build up of uh, lubricants as the oil based lubricant might not be flushed out as effectively as uh, the used paint. And had a couple of uh, buds that were quite dirty to the point where it's clean. As a uh, very quick air compressor maintenance, the tank was completely charged up and full. I used uh, the remaining PSI and pressure to drain the uh, water trap. Generally after every session I also do this. The uh, hose was also completely drained out of uh, air using a tap. Again you can pinch the hose, wait for the tank to fill up and let go to release all the air and the moisture within the line. The entirety of the inside uh, rear section and behind the uh, paint cup as well as the threaded areas was uh, lubricated using petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Just an application via Q-tip onto those areas that will not likely mix with the paint or be within the um, paint jar for contamination. I assembled the air solenoid trigger in the airbrush alone, no needle. Charged uh, the line with air and to see if uh, the old uh, mechanism works again, which successfully did and... I'm actually quite happy with that, that uh, very little work was uh, done to get it back up to scratch. I was again very happy that I had a spare on uh, standby from last month. The rest of the airbrush was uh, assembled, as always in my tr traditional and um, well-known manner. The uh, back was not included and uh, sprayed some lines, doing some slight adjustments. As I uh, mentioned in the first video, I haven't really gotten any uh, thinner or as thin as a pencil. And the start and the end of the lines do get sloppy 
as I do, but some of them are quite sharp. It's not so much uh, tuning, but more so uh, my skills and uh, patience. But uh, we don't really have any fuzzy lines cutting out. These are all consistent, uh, straight, uh, good lines that's coming out of a large compressor, uninterrupted air supply, and uh, an airbrush that's able to uh, follow a continuous line across an A4 sheet of paper, which in the way of tuning and maintaining your airbrush, that's fairly good performance. Now the bad side of all this, and uh, quite unfortunate, that um, with some of the seals leaking and wearing down a bit, I tilted my airbrush uh, with the nozzle pointing um, beyond a 45 degree angle upwards and a little bit of uh, paint uh, rushed all the way to the back and sort of uh, covered the complete rear area that got me to disassemble and quickly swab out with a cotton swab and some thinner. As your seal starts to die down you, when loaded with paint your airbrush should always be uh, pointing in a negative 45 degree um, angle of the paint cup to prevent any um, backwards leaking of paint. If you pull your needle out for any reason to check for any sort of uh, faults, always, always have your um, nozzle pointing downwards in a negative 45 degree angle and not up. All that aside, I do have to also mention after the uh, year of um, doing this series, the ultrasonic uh, cleaning, having the ability of uh, no blockage or clogs, especially with the use of uh, micro uh, filling primers, and uh, the airbrush generally, the needle never jamming when being pulled back and introduced with uh, air, constantly being smoothed, um, even with uh, metal on metal action. Lubrication of the internals of your airbrush and uh, Ultrasonic cleaning has uh, really improved the tuning and the performance of uh, my airbrush. And uh, I could definitely stay from this point onwards. Uh, that is definitely highly recommend uh, to copy. This uh, concludes my um, honing your airbrush videos skill video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, until uh, next time, I'll... Uh, do the video again in a month or so time. I actually want to uh, paint and shade a small piece again like I did a couple of months ago. And uh, if anyone has any ideas, any tricks, tips they want to try out, um, or they want to have the series or the next episode focus in a certain area, shoot us a comment and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much for watching and as always, until next time.